we're heading to Florida. My car keeps asking the charger to dance oh, and the charger keeps slapping it down saying, get away from me. I don't want to dance with you. <laughs> Get too close to, too close Get close to me. Too close. So, so look, you know, here's what I would say. I, I would ask that all of you who know this, right? Share the love, send this video to someone who's thinking about getting a car. And, uh, there's Kyle calling me. I'm going to, I'm going to decline him. Uh, I'll get back to you, son. Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where we are doing exactly three miles an hour on 95, somewhere in North Carolina. And, you know, it's interesting. I got to talking to Kathy. This is, this is Kathy over here, AKA Out of Spec Mom. And Bailey's asleep in the back seat. Maybe we'll wake her up and no, bring her up. No, sure let's le let's leave her. It's good if she's you quiet. Never wake a sleeping baby. It's yeah. Don't don't wake the sleeping baby. But you know, over the last month or so, I have been out at the CCS charging networks, and I've noticed a lot of people charging their cars and getting into conversations with them about how their cars charge. And there seems to be a lot of misconceptions out there. Now, I'm not suggesting that any subscriber of Out of Spec Dave doesn't understand how a car charges, right? But, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the car is asking, it's asking the charger, would you like to dance? Do you want a tango? And sometimes the charger says yes, and sometimes the charger says no. And sometimes it can't make up its mind. And sometimes it can't make so up its mind. Like, but either way, sometimes the car just walks with its tail between its legs, go back to the bar and maybe, you know, has to rethink things. And I've seen a lot of this lately. So let's get into this because I think there's something for all of us to understand a little bit better, maybe just a little bit. All right, so what am I talking about here? I'll give you an example. The other day I was charging at, um, in Stamford, Connecticut at Ridgefield. It's the EA over Ridgeway. there. Ridgeway. Ridgeway. Yeah, that's true. Ridgefield is in Connecticut, but I was at Ridgeway Plaza in Stamford, Connecticut. And there was an XC40 recharge charging on a 350. And nice, nice lady and, and, and she, I got to, into a conversation with her and I said, listen, I just want to let you know that the 350 that you're charging on is, is actually what I call nerfed. It's not able to give out the full 350 um, output that, it, that it, it is capable of doing. It's only capable of putting out 50 kilowatts. And she says, oh no, no, you don't understand. I said, she, I said, okay, what, what, tell me. She said, when I, when I got this car, it's a company car. She's a traveling salesperson. She said she was told to use the three fifties because they're faster. And I said, okay. Um, but, but ma'am, there's, there's this little, little sign on the EA window that said due to maintenance, this, this charging station is limiting its power. And she said, oh, okay. Even though it says 350, it's not giving me 350. I said, no, it's, it's gonna give maximum of 50 kilowatts because Electrify America is claiming that they have to do some maintenance on it, right? And they're fixing it. So I said, I, I just so you know, I called Electrify America and I asked them, I think this was mid-March, and I asked them when did they start to do this maintenance? And they said, well, it's been in this state since the end of February. There's nobody doing any maintenance on it. They've just nerfed that 350 to 50 kilowatts. So I then said, if you go over to a 150, and there are a lot more 150s typically at EA, at EA uh, CCS, uh, the charging stations, you will actually charge three times faster than at this 350 because it's it's only going to put out 50. Um, and she and she thanked me and she moved her car and she goes, "Wow, look at that! That's amazing." And what I said was that you have to understand that the car is the person asking the charger to dance. The car tells the charger how much energy to give it, and and the and the car 
may not be able to ask for a lot of energy if the battery's super cold. It's like freezing outside. I can't, I can't take too much energy, right? So some people have features in their cars where before they get to the charging station, they can either push a button or they can precondition their battery. Basically, turn the heat on, warm up the battery. The battery has coils, uh, liquid coils over it or some sort of way to heat the battery up so that when you pull into the, the charging station to charge, you, you, the, the battery will be at the optimal temperature to be able to accept as much energy as it can. All right, so any, I just wanna stop there. Any questions for you? No. You got this. You will summarize what I've said so far or no? No, you finish up and then I will. Then you'll, okay. Summarize. All right, so, okay. so I said, even if, that 350 was working perfectly, your Volvo XC40 is only capable of asking the charger to give me a maximum of 150 kilowatts. I said my Lucid or other cars like a Porsche Taycan or um, you know, a Ionic 5 or a GV60 or even some of the new Volkswagen ID4s with the new software version 3.0 or the ones that are being built out of Chattanooga, they can accept more than 150. But a car like a Chevy Bolt or a Kia Nero um, or a Hyundai Kona, right? They can't accept very much at all. In fact, bolts can maximize, maximum charge about 55 kilowatts and um, Konas can take up to around 77 kilowatts. So I said, there's no benefit to you when you're going to charge your car to charge at a 350, even though it's a bigger number. And someone said, your car is not capable of pulling anything more than 150. And so she was like, wow, thank you so much. That's really awesome. And, and, and I got to thinking that there's just so much misconception and not and the lack of knowledge and it's nobody's fault. Oh, I did. Yes, there, it is somebody's fault. It is? Whose fault? I think it's the dealership's fault. I think when someone buys an electric car, yeah. it's their job to educate them on what they're buying and how it should be and, sort of serviced, right? You right. can't just pull up to a gas station and you know either pick diesel or regular or premium. You have to know your maximum charging, which start charging stations to go to, and I think that's the dealership. I think the dealership needs to educate their clientele better. Yeah, but you know what? Part of the they problem. Don't. I know they don't. Part, right. Part of the like problem is that the dealers are. I don't think they know. I don't think a lot of the salespeople understand electric cars. Right. Well, that, that well, that's. I think it's getting. Maybe it's not getting, but I, I think that it depends on where you go. It's hit or miss. Of course. And in, and in this person's case, she was given the car by her company. She, she, you know, it wasn't like she even went and bought the car or leased the car. It was like, here's a car and here's what you do. You got, you, every time you need fuel, just go to Electrify America right. and it's just free. Plug in. Just plug in. Yeah. And that's all she knew. Sure. So, so, but, but, uh, but to your point, there's a lack of knowledge transfer, whether it's coming from the dealership or in this particular case, from her company. All right, so then today, when we were just in, uh, where were we, Richmond, Virginia. Again, I pull into Electrify America with my, my Lucid and the 350s, both of them software limited. They're being fixed or they're under maintenance and they're only putting out 50 kilowatts. So what's sitting on the hook is a GV, not a GV, an EV6, which is an EGMP platform car, Kia, and an Ionic 5. And they're both sitting on the 350s. And meanwhile, there's, there were what? Six additional 150s there as well, okay? And both of them, both of their cars are absolutely capable of charging much faster than 150. Um, your car, GV60, it's basically the same same car. 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, 800 plus or minus volt system. They're capable of pulling on a 350 
upwards of, I've seen 240, 241 max peak, then they taper off. But that car is a beast of a charger, any of them, Kia oh, EV6. Sure. But meanwhile, these people, both of them are plugged into a 350 and, and the person's pulling 38 kilowatts at, and now granted he was at a state of charge of 65, but the unit, it couldn't put out more than 50. So again, I had a conversation with him. I said, look, this particular station, this 350, and I'm seeing this now, we've seen it now two times today and we've only charged it two different places. Right. Both, all the 350s are nerfed. I don't know what's going on, but I think it's these sort of older, not the newer generation Signets. I was talking to Kyle earlier, and it's like this certain generation of Signet units, the ones with the green around the outside that are that are kind of going undergoing these problems. So anyway, um, so I had this conversation with, with the gentleman. He just got the car. He was all excited. As a matter of fact, the Ionic 5 was the exact same one that I got, right, in that matte color. And um, he was all, he was he and his wife were an older gentleman, too. Yes. Super nice guy yes. from North Carolina. He was going to Pittsburgh. And this was his first road trip, and he was all excited. And he's sitting there saying, boy, this is taking a, quite a long time. And I said, sir, that just so you know, this cabinet, and again, I went through the whole thing where I said, it's only going to put out 50 kilowatts. So if you move over to one of the 150s, you're going to pull three times the speed. And... He totally got it. He was like, thank you so much. And and so... And Look, people are smart. Yeah. There's intelligent people. 100%, they just, yeah. They just don't have the right information. Yeah, so... They're not educated on what their car can do and how it should be done. And again, I'm sorry, I'm blaming the dealerships. Or maybe I should be blaming EA. I'm already frustrated with EA, and we've only stopped twice. Yeah, yeah I'm no, really frustrated. I, I'm frustrated this with is EA. It's a long road trip. Yeah. And, you know, you buy this this car, this Lucid, because you know it's a beast, and it's supposed to charge fast, and we can get going it, it and can, go long yeah. distances. Yeah. We're not getting that experience. But my car keeps asking the charger to dance, oh, and nice. the charger keeps slapping it down, saying, get away from me. I don't want to dance with you. <laughs> getting too close to me. Getting too boy. close getting to me. Close. So, so look, you know, here's what I would say. I, I would ask that all of you who know this, right, share the love. Send this video to someone who's thinking about getting a car, and uh, there's Kyle calling me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to decline him. Uh, I'll get back to you, son. Um, but share this video with someone who's thinking about getting a car and who who should maybe just be a little bit educated that it's the car that asks the charger if the car is able to take whatever it can take based on the conditions, the temperature of the battery pack and all of that. Oh, no. Now he's calling you. He must yeah, he must need us. So, uh, but with that, we'll end this video. Just spread the love. Send this video to someone that maybe wants to learn a little bit or even it just teach people. We've got to educate people out there in the marketplace. And um, yeah, with that, have a good one. Thanks again for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave and we'll catch you on the next one.